So, you just saw New Mutants, and you're asking yourself, did, did I actually see the movie? It was supposed to come out like 12 years ago. But you also may be asking yourself, is there a connection to the X-Men universe or one of the many multiple timelines that have been created? Now, they mention a couple of things in the movie, and if you were a tad bit confused, as maybe I was at first, today I'm going to do my best to explain to you where this fits in to one of the many timelines, continuity, schmontinuity for the X-Men universe. And again, this is the final movie in that specific universe, so in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter, but it's still an interesting point to talk about because there is one movie specifically that it draws its attention to, but we will get into it. First off, I do want to start with uh, a little something that is referred to as Essex Corp or the Essex Corporation. Now, if you are a comic book fan, you know exactly what this is, but this is something that was first introduced to us in X-Men Apocalypse in an after credit scene where a man from this company is seen taking up the samples of Wolverine's blood after the mutant goes crazy, and these samples are placed into a briefcase with the name Essex Corp. Now, the name obviously refers to Nathaniel Essex, who was teased multiple times throughout New Mutants. In the comics, he's known as Mr. Sinister. Now, there's a whole big shindig we could get in with, oh, someone was actually cast at one point as Mr. Sinister. This is something they were going to explore in the potential sequel, but now that shut down, obviously, because it's a brand new universe, and, you know, some of the reviews obviously aren't helping that, but it is an interesting point that they brought up. So, who is Mr. Sinister? He was introduced in the 1980s to give the X-Men uh, a very different kind of villain, very different than Magneto and the Brotherhood. So he actually began as a scientist, kind of diving into Darwin's theory of evolution and uh, not as concerned about something known as human decency. He's a horrible person, but he did uncover the secret to the mutants' existence, but also the process that gives them their powers. Now, because of this, he wanted to uh, experiment on mutants and kind of investigate a lot of this. So, what he did is exactly that, and that's what you see in this film. He is kind of the man in charge of this group of new mutants, even though it's a really big house, and there's just a couple of kids. Okay, but what they're doing here is they're experimenting on these kids to see if they can move on to the next step. Now, what is the next step? So let's go back to X-Men Apocalypse. Why did he need Wolverine's blood? Well, he actually has the ability to kind of take the genes of mutants and put them into his own, allowing him to copy their powers. Now, this is something that they may not have even tackled in the movie, but that's kind of where we're going in that post credit scene for X-Men Apocalypse. So one would think, right, oh, well, he just, you know, he kind of wants an army of mutants at his side. Now, we don't know specifically, but that does seem likely, but what also makes sense to me is the fact that they took those samples and even though, again, the timeline itself is confusing, a lot of people see Logan as a movie in an alternate timeline, but it makes sense that they took those samples and created X-23 from Wolverine's DNA to put in almost the camps that they had the children in experimenting on. So, at the end of the day, the general aspect of this timeline does somewhat line up, taking the samples, turning that into X-23, which was the entire premise of Logan, but then once you start looking at that actual timeline, that's where it begins to get a bit more fuzzy, and you have someone like Sunspot, who is both uh, this guy, and then that guy, you know, we've seen that before in this universe, but still, it, it's confusing. Now, what I think we all want to know here is what did this signify when we got these scenes straight from Logan? Because the conception going in was the fact that this had nothing to do with a movie like Logan that looks as if it's kind of based around the original trilogy, uh, but even removing itself from that. But no, we got footage straight from that film. When the character of Danielle was getting these projections into her mind, seeing it looks as if what Dr. Reyes has seen, or at least what goes on when they move on to the next step. And it looks as if the next step is what we saw in Logan when these kids were being experimented on and utilized for their abilities to attack and destroy. And then we see them escape and we get Logan 
from that. So, Austin, where does this take place in that specific timeline? Since it was mentioned earlier in the film that the X-Men, and granted, they've been in that facility for a while, so they may not be aware, are, are still a thing. And then we know in Logan, Professor X seemed to have murdered the majority of of the X-Men. Now that could have absolutely happened again. They're obviously being sheltered in that facility so a lot of things are going on in the outside world and maybe they are in somewhat of this post, not apocalyptic, but landscape that we see in Logan after the X-Men are killed. But if we are to believe what he said, this had to take place in the time before Xavier killed the X-Men, which was exactly what happened to put Professor X in that situation. His powers were slowly going beyond what he could handle. So at the end of the day, we have one of two options. This either takes place after the X-Men have died in that universe and right before Logan or right before the X-Men have died, which according to our characters, they're still a thing. How cool would it be to become part of the X-Men? Nah, kids, you're here, you're getting experimented on, and you're about to move on to uh, where X-23 was in Logan. So not expecting a full-on Logan connection going in to New Mutants, but that is actually the film that and X-Men Apocalypse that this particular entry hit on the most. Regardless, I understand we covered a lot in this video. We talked about timelines and the fact that New Mutants probably takes place right before Logan. We hit on Mr. Sinister, the possibilities of what the future could have been with the Essex Corporation. So many things covered in this video, but I appreciate your time and your patience. And uh, I do want to add in, if you haven't watched New Mutants, this was probably just extremely confusing. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. It is a self-contained movie, but it is interesting to dive in nonetheless. What I'm curious about is, hey, did you guys enjoy this kind of video? If you'd like to see more, be sure to smash that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments down below. And B, how do you feel about Marvel now, the MCU, taking over these characters? Do you think we will get more comic book accurate adaptations? Or will we kind of revert back to what we saw in some of the older X-Men movies? Some of those movies are good, by the way, but they just didn't feel as X-Men as maybe a lot of comic fans wanted. Regardless, let me know what you think of New Mutants, all of your comments down below. Appreciate you guys for watching. And I'll see you soon. So let's take a look at the timeline here. So on April 22nd, 2017, the New Mutants got its very first release date on April 13, 2018. Then on January 11th, 2018, it was pushed back to February 22nd, 2019. On March 26th, 2018, it was pushed back to August 2nd, 2019. All right, still going. On May 7th, 2019, it was pushed back to April 3rd, 2020. Then on March 12th, 2020, it was delayed indefinitely. Finally, on May 13th, it was dated for August 28th, 2020, and that's today.